this is Brian Wormers recording a lecture from Medical Surgical Nursing on the topic of post-operative nursing. Here are your learning objectives, the same as on the PowerPoint. That post-operative period, it begins with completion of surgery and then when the patient transfers to PACU ambulatory care unit or into the ICU in which they'll recover the patient. So surgical care improvement projects um, are just things trying to improve care of the patient and improve on core measures. Some of the time what we'd be thinking about with these are, you know, pneumonia prevention, shock prevention, cardiac arrest, respiratory arrest, DVT, GI bleeding, wound infection, all those um, risks that the patients are at for are at risk for um, are trying to be diminished. So respiratory system assessment, so airway is probably the paramount uh, assessment feature in this time frame. Maintaining a patent airway, making sure that they're still breathing. If they've got an artificial airway in place, make sure that it's still applicable and working. Note the quality of their breathing. Um, is, it, is it working for them or are they becoming apneic or hypovolemic uh, on their respirations? Listen to their bowels breath sounds trying to prevent any crackles or pneumonias, um, accessory muscle use, are they breathing easily or are they tugging, and is there any snoring or strider, um, if they've had an ET tube in place, then that strider can be a complication of that, and then of course respiratory depression or hypoxemia related to um, the anesthetics that they just received. Cardiovascular, so we're looking for vital signs, we're listening to heart sounds, Cardiac monitoring, so EKGs, blood pressures, uh, maybe even wedge pressures and arterial blood lines, but that we'll get to that later. And high acuity nursing. And then peripheral vascular assessments, monitoring for uh, venothrombosis, emboli. And then, you know, of course, watching for any signs or symptoms of hemorrhage or shock. Neurologic, we're trying to make them back to their baseline. Um, after surgery, they can be very lethargic um, or restless after surgery because of the meds, but we want to make sure that that's a medication thing and not necessarily um, an issue because of neural trauma, neural damage, or hypoxemia. So muscle and sensory assessment is important. We want to make sure that they've got good motor function and that they're returning to their baseline. We want to check fluid and electrolyte. Um, balances. Um, it, they tend to get lots of shifting of fluid into the um, cellular space and into third spacing. So you got to see what they're putting in, what they're taking out. And all that can be, you know, it's IV fluids, it's vomit, it's urine, it's wound dressing and drainage. It is uh, nasogastric drainage. So all that plays a role. Renal, our biggest thing is we just got to make sure that we've got enough volume and they're making urine of greater than 30 mils per hour. GI system, a lot of times people will have um, some nausea and vomiting after surgery. This is common. We try, try to give them some meds, oftentimes including like a Zofran or an antivert. Um, but if we can, our best thing is, is trying to get that taken care of um, as soon as possible. You also have to be aware of that there can be peristalsis issues in which the bowel kind of su shuts down, especially if you're operating on that bowel. So um, no feeding them real big foods and so or solid foods uh, until they are able to um, fart and to pass some stool. NG tube drainage. So with this, we're trying to figure out, um, you might put an NG down, um, of course, to decompress and drain the stomach of either air or hydrochloric acid. And that's trying to promote GI rest and allow that GI tract to heal. So with this, we can also provide enteral feeding so we can dump food down there or medications down there. And then we want to monitor for any gastric bleedings or signs of irritation. We do want to a drain, or uh, sorry, we want to assess that drainage material every eight hours at a minimum. I usually say, you know, two hours is probably a better bet um, with our new EMRs. Just try and do it in live time. If this falls out 
and especially if they've had any kind of gastric or esophageal um, issues or surgeries, um, notify the physician because you don't want to be putting it down in through new sutures and possibly wrecking a surgery. So skin assessment is very important. We want to make sure that the wound is healing well. Most of the time what we're seeing is five to ten days after this, we can have issues with it. Issues meaning dehiscence where your skin is pulling apart or even evisceration if you have some of the internal organs trying to go through a wound. Like in this picture, you've got intestines coming through. Some dressings and drains that you might see would include a penrose, a tea drain. And so this is a picture of a penrose coming out. This is a Jackson Pratt or a JP drain. And so you've got this kind of situation. This hooks up to this, and that hooks up to that. And then you've got this tunneled in the skin. And it's there to try and pull out um, secretions and, and drainage. This is a hemovac. Um, this is just by you squeeze it and then shut it, and that creates a negative pressure. This one has actually got springs inside of it on the hemovac, and that creates a negative pressure. So you squeeze it together, and then you clamp it off, creating a vacuum. Same as, very similar to the JP. Pain management is huge after surgery because it, it often hurts. Uh, we have to do a great job of monitoring for pain and documenting pain and then treating pain. And it doesn't always have to be with meds, but we have to treat pain with a variety of things. And multimodal is definitely the way to go. Um, with this, we have to have considerations of what kind of surgery did they have, how extensive was it, and all that can kind of give you a, a rough idea of how much pain that patient might be in. On this slide, I'm going to talk about the five W's. Uh, I know that this isn't in your book, but this is um, common reasons to have fever after surgery. And the first one is water. Thinking about water, you're thinking about UTI. So if they had a Foley in, that might be one of the main re first reasons. Second one would be wind, so meaning pneumonias um, or even atelectasis from not breathing deep enough. Next one would be walking. Um, so that is referring to deep vein thrombosis. And in that case, you know, we got to be very careful with that. Wound would be the last or the next one. And that surgery would be related to any surgical wound infections. And you might notice drainage with that. And the last one is weird drugs. And this can happen at any time, depending on what new medications that they might be on. Everything from antibiotics to um, sedation to a variety of things. This concludes this lecture on postoperative nursing. If you have any content or questions on this content, please contact your instructor.